by helicopter, horseback, and the sweat of their brow. A team of biologists from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, New Mexico Department of Game and Fish, and the U.S. Forest Service endeavor to return the threatened Gila trout to its former range in the American Southwest. Whether stocking large adult Gila trout or freshly fertilized eggs, the aims are the same. Expand the rare trout's range, get it off the threatened species list, and create more opportunity for anglers to catch this pretty, coppery yellow trout found nowhere else in the world except for the headwaters of the Gila River. It's a beautiful fish, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's coloration, it's copper color. The way it looks in the water while it swims by is, is just amazing. And working in the Gila wilderness is, you know, the first wilderness within the, the United States, which is kind of a special, a special place to work. It's one of those things working with an endangered species that's really special. Um, you get to put all of your effort into trying to conserve a species to try to get it, uh, you know, off the endangered species list. You know, we're looking at a fish that has probably lost a lot of genetic diversity. So when we're breeding fish in, in more national fish hatchery and we're raising them there, we need to make sure that we're not, we're not spawning fish to lose even more genetic diversity. So we can try to conserve as much of the genetics as possible between lineages and among lineages. Heel trout was um, one of the, the first species uh, listed. It was uh, listed under the precursor to the Endangered Species Act. So that was, um, I think, in 1966, and then um, listed as endangered under the Endangered Species Act in 1973. Um, a lot of work was done by the Fish and Wildlife Service and the states of Arizona and New Mexico, and it was downlisted in 2006. And at that time, the Fish and Wildlife Service um, implemented a special rule that allowed for angling. So that's why we're able to um, provide angling for this trout, even though it is listed under ESA. And the current status is as threatened. Gila trout are, are basically an icon to the Southwest. And that's, that's really, to me, is, is what it means is, is wilderness and wild places. You know, this is the, the first designated wilderness in the country and Gila trout are a result of that designation. So I think that uh, the unique experience that is offered to anglers, you know, I, I don't think that can be found anywhere else, you know, and I, I think that's what really draws people here. Um, you know, it's, it's not like your other typical fish, you know, it doesn't necessarily get as big, but it takes you into these places that are so remote and so beautiful that most people don't ever get to them, you know. And, and it's, it's kind of neat that the foresight of these people, you know, like Aldo Leopold that designated this, are actually what, what gives me my job today and what, what makes this possible, this whole recovery effort, you know, because without that, Gila trout wouldn't be around. So really, you know, I think that, that that's, that's what it symbolizes. And I think that the anglers and then the, the local people need to really take, take account of that and, and really appreciate what, what we have here. It just strikes me this is a journey. You know, we're here with the biologists, the main biologists for Gila trout from the, the several offices, the Forest Service, the Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, New Mexico Game and Fish, and doing something we've never tried before, putting eggs directly into the gravel um, from hatchery, but fish that we spawn with wild parents and uh, taking a stream that's currently empty and uh, putting Gila trout back uh, to see how they do. And when you look at this landscape and walk up here, it is a journey. It's, you come from the, the valley floor that's dry and desert, and then you come up here and there's actually water. And now there's going to be trout too, which is pretty neat. One of the huge challenges of the Gila is it's rough country. And, and because it's rough, that's probably why it's been protected. And now we've put protections here, but it has limited influence from man. The downfall of that is it's tough. It's tough for us to get in and out of habitat for Gila trout. And when we're trying to bring in fish, we need to bring in mule teams, uh, big pack strings, a lot of equipment. And right now with the, the fires, uh, it's been hard to get up the trails. There, there's blow down and stuff like that. So being able to downsize to eggs, they're very light, easy to carry. Um, the, the neat part about eyed eggs, they don't even have to be in water. So water's heavy. We can carry them in, in wet paper towels on ice. They'll do very, very well and, uh, and then I'll plant them directly. And so it's another tool in the toolbox that helps us get to these inaccessible streams and help them recover faster. It's the experience to fish, fish a Gila trout and to experience 
this country in the Southwest, very unique, very undisturbed, very limited, uh, not accessed by very many people. And that's really the magic of it. That's what Gila trout represent. And they're our indicator for this. This is a, a tough environment. They're an indicator for us to see the healthiness of the ecosystem. And that's why I think the biologists get so passionate about Gila trout, because they give us an indication of how are things doing in a really changing and fire sculpted landscape now. I am a New Mexico native and there's something just really special about coming down to the Gila and being able to put a line in the water and pull out a Gila trout, which is one of our amazing native species. And so, yeah, we can go catch rainbow and brown trout all day other places, but there's something really special about just coming up here, pulling one of those out of the water and seeing its beautiful coloration and the wild place that they live that's so special to what New Mexico is at its very core. Honestly, being in the Gila, it's always breathtaking and it just kind of is a slap across the face when you're going from your hectic everyday life and stepping out into nature, the vast expanse of the Gila just kind of brings you back down to earth pretty quickly. And after about two hours, I pulled my first Gila trout out of the water. I was super excited. Um, it was pretty small, but that doesn't matter to me because it was absolutely gorgeous. And I caught and released it and hopefully it grows back into a big, beautiful tra uh, trout that I can come back and trap try to catch again later. You know, you can't come in here as a fish biologist and not think back to why you got started. For me, it was fishing streams that looked very similar to where we are now in northern Wisconsin. These, they were limestone streams and running over rocks and the fish weren't big and maybe they weren't even plentiful, but it was the journey to see what was around each bend and the next pool and what might be there. And I see myself seeing the same things here in Sacatone Creek in the way southwestern corner of New Mexico. Uh, it's just incredible. It's an incredible place that I hope more people get to experience and also that we can spread the, the word that this experience is out there. I think just the physical act of catching a Gila trout for people that have done it and gone through the journey, it is that. It's a journey. It's about getting out here into places that haven't been touched very often and it's not that common to see people. And, uh, and it's that outdoor experience that this species brings and, it, and shows us an indication of how healthy the streams are doing. <laughs>